Much out to the family, much out to the tribe. Welcome and welcome back to another episode of Templar Up. I'm your host in Templar Urban Reed. Thank you for surfing the wave with me because I'm surfing the wave with you. I appreciate everybody out there uh, rocking with me. This month has been a challenging month. Pretty sure it's been a challenging month for all of us. So, um, thank you. I'm very thankful for your, for your patience and uh, and your support across the plane. It doesn't matter if it's a uh, joy world. It doesn't matter if it's uh, you know that ether bus. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is. The Shavata has been been 100 they've been ktc and they've been keeping the code they've been blue purple red white linen gold thread and um this month has really allowed for me to take a step back and um not only observe but appreciate the difference between you know knowing the law and living it and um, so what I want to do today, um, I want to kind of keep in that mode of things and kind of bring things together. I want to, um, I want to go over a few things and then it's, you know, I need to go over uh, some things. And the idea today is really trying to, to, to sacrifice format you know, to kind of info pack. I think, um, given, given my observation, I think having the information right now is, uh, more important. Now, um, I've noticed that there are, uh, deviations, right? I noticed that although that there, there are deviations, uh, we often, more often than not, uh, come to the same conclusion, right? At the same time, those deviations uh, create a unique perspective. Um, a prime example of this um, would be um, a prime example of this would be like how I. Like I like how I perceive, um, let's say, Jeffrey of Mama, you know, versus how Khan may feel about Jeffrey of Mama, you know, you know, and you know, Khan looks at it as you know he complete hijack, right? <laughs> but you know, I I look at it as when we did the recon, I'm like, man, this dude was really getting the Negro treatment, you know what I'm saying? But we came up to the same conclusions, despite you know, despite the fact, uh, based on the recon. But that 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 deviation there, you know, it it, it creates a a unique perspective when when you're surfing the wave, and, you know, in these other classrooms, um, when you when you're digging on nine spiral popping off, or you know, when we're when you're digging on drop poetry you know you know any of the even even if it's something as simple as listening to five eyes ma just vibe up right on that turf thirst you know there's there's still a vibe there's still a message in the vibe you know and although that there's i guess what i'm trying to say here is is that in a word uh, you know what we're talking about we're talking about fractals right now as for me the way I see and understand history and timelines is, is, is dramatically different right as to how I see the information about histories and timeline you know you know when you might hear or take on a drop and it may and it may be and it may break down to you where we might say, you know, don't worry about this. Just get the information. Just get the you know the moshes out. Get the babies out the bathwater. 
You know what I'm saying? And in the couple of years, six six years now of uh, understanding histories and timelines and trying to put it together, you know, th there was a, I've come to find that there was a, a deeper meaning um, behind a lot of these numbers um, per se, uh, when it comes down to these dates and measures, you know, that, that again, that uh, um, exoteric and that esoteric, right? Now, the same is true when it comes down to like definitions, you know, etymology, uh, and even ph philology, you know, that philo. So I hear things, and I'm pretty sure you do too, and as, and, 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 and as we've grown, I'm pretty sure you've uh, noticed that you react to words differently. You know what I'm saying? And what it comes down to is that, you know, the, the as the saying goes, the, the fruit proves the root, and the root proves the fruit, right? In, in many ways. You know, I'm not going to plant a mustard seed and expect to get peaches. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, and and here's an example of what I'm what I'm saying. Um, you know what's said or or what's written may not be what one perceives. In a nutshell, right? In a nutshell, and that's kind of what we're gonna gonna go over. Now, just to preface, preface. Pref <laughs> just a prep I can't even say the word preference um, so you get an idea what I'm what I'm saying here right let's let's quickly spiral on something here you know because when we're dealing with the chakras we, we correlated that you know the chakra points each represents a word um, and a question so when it comes down to perception is a difference between asking who told you that where where did you get that from when when did this happen what makes you say that how did you come to that conclusion why would you say that and of course if this be true then fill in the blank right all those questions are asking this um, the same question in a different frequency. Energy and vibration. For the most part, and I've stated this before, there's literally just too much taken for granted when it comes down to what's said, what's written, um, and the like. Um, so what we're gonna do here is, is pop things off with, an, uh, with this example, and that is, uh, that is the Pentatosh, right? I'm pretty sure we're all familiar with the, with the Pentatosh, right? Okay, so let's kind of dig on, I think, uh, let's go back. Because we're talking about the the Torah. <laughs> Excuse me, Shalaki. Now, pretty sure we're all familiar here with the word uh, Pentatosh. Um, I'm pretty sure we're all familiar with uh, the Tanakh and what have you. But a lot of times we often conflate and confuse a lot of things. And uh, here we go. Now, this article is about the Hebrew Torah, right? And it's clearly states now for uh, Samaritanism. You know, you got to see a Samaritan Pentateuch uh, for others. Uh, for others, you to see Torah, just ambiguous. Then Pentateuch redirects here, right? 
uh, for other uses. He turned the torch disambiguous. And then it says, not to be confused with the Tanakh. Not to be confused with the Tanakh, right? Also see the law of Moses. Now, the Torah, right? Which means instruction, teaching, or law, right? Includes the first five books of the Hebrew Bible named Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. When used in that sense, Torah means the same as Pentateuch, or the five books of Moses. It is also known in Jewish tradition as the written Torah, Torah Kat, Kat Tuva. It, mean, it meant for liturgical, liturgical uh, purposes, it takes the form of a Torah scroll, Sefer Torah. However, the word Torah can be used also as a synonym, right, for the Hebrew Bible or Tanakh, in which it includes not only the first five, but all 24 books of the Hebrew Bible. If in bound form, it is called a kumash, right? Kumash. And, you know, when we're talking about that Bial Peor, right? It sounds very similar to Kemosh and the values of the, the letters, right? And usually, because you got to understand, you know, there was a falling away, right? We, we messed up. And it's usually printed in the rabbinical commentaries, right? The Peru, 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 Shim, Peru, Shim, right? We know that im is makes it plural, right? So is it the perus, right? Perusim, okay. Finally, the Torah can be uh, even more to, uh, can mean more the totality of the Jewish teaching, culture, practice, whether de derived from the biblical context or later rabbinical writings. The latter is often known as the oral Torah. Okay, the common to all of these meanings, Torah consists of the origin of Jewish peoplehood, their call into being by God, their trials and tribulations, their covenants, right? Their covenants with their God, which involves following the following a way of life and body in a set of moral, religious obligations and civil laws, halakha, right? The Torah, also Torah or Torah, Arabic, right, is the Arab, uh, Arabic name for the Torah within the context of the Islamic holy book believed by Muslims to be given by God by the prophets among the children of Israel. And, all, and often refers to other, uh, the entire Hebrew Bible. Now, why am I bringing, bringing this up? Okay. Because we're talking about the books being written by Moses, right? We're talking about the books being written by Moses. Now, we often uh, take for granted that the uh, Torah was written by Moses. Now, I want you to pay close attention because, and I've stated this before, when it comes down to the, um, you have the Abrahamic, the Noahic, and the Mosaic uh, religions, right? They all follow uh, a certain pattern, a certain code, a certain law. But despite everyone, you know, 90% of the population, and they tell us now that is what, 7 million people, 7 billion people? So out of 7 billion people, 6 to 6.5 billion people believe in Moses. But when you look it up, despite the fact um, he's actually considered a myth. 
Now, it's kind of, it kind of seems, I don't know, at odds, right? But when you dig on it, when it comes down to uh, this Moses, then you have to ask, especially in this level of investigation, which one? Because as we, as we learn, there's more than one Moses. Now, here's the beauty and the irony. Because despite the multiple Moseses, or Mosai's, <laughs> um, they all tend to share a similar story. And that's kind of the whole point. Now, you have a mental connection to the Torah and that and you've been programmed to project that this this Moses uh, that you commonly know and understand was walking around the earth in like 1200 BC. But if all that was going down in 1200 AD, it doesn't reject the information, right? But it puts more purpose, it puts more um, weight to how recent this is. By, by, by a large degree. So, which Moses wrote the, wrote the book? So, breaking this all down, you kind of have to put things back together and look at things across a full spectrum. It, it, you know, as I was explaining to a friend of mine, and I think I had a similar conversation with Yosef, there's a difference between the formula and the equation. The equation is going to give you an answer, but the formula never changes. You know, the, the formula seeks uh, to, to reconcile Whereas the, the equation wants an answer. And those are, though they're similar, they're not, they're not the same. So, in a, in a sense, reality is not what you perceive. Yet, what you perceive is reality. The um, extent of one's reality is perception. Okay. The extent of one's reality is perception. So you have information, data, and knowledge. And those three make your perception. Now, the information can be right. The data can be right. But if the knowledge is wrong, then it's all wrong. Conversely, if the information is wrong and the data is wrong, but the knowledge is right, knowledge will auto-correct the information in the data. This is why knowledge is the door to understanding. So what's reality? Well, reality in the 1540s, right, is the quality of being real. There's a, there's a, quality to to it objective reality why does it have to be objective or better yet let this bake your noodle if there's an object reality then there has to be a what subjective reality okay now this is all from the uh, french and the latin Right, and it tells you to see what real, right? The adjective also compare realty, right? Which was the older form, right, of the word in the sense of reality mid uh, 15th century. Now, when I when you say realty today, right? Now you're talking about what land, now you're talking about a realtor, right? 
meaning real existence, what is real, the aggregate of all that is real is from 1640s. So understand that reality did not mean real existence, what is real, the aggregate of all that is real before 1640s. And that's an important time of uh, an important date, 1640s. And, um, and, this, and that goes back into the work of Anatoly Gromenko. Okay. And I think I covered that, but maybe we'll, the next time I might go more into detail. Maybe. <laughs> now, um, that of the real state of something is from 1680s. 17, uh, sometimes 17th century to 18th century. It also meant sincerity, okay? Reality base is a test from 1960s in marriage counseling, right? And reality t television is a test from 1991, okay? Real, right? Actually existing, having physical existence, not imaginary, all right? Relating to things, especially property, right? Real, real, actual, okay? You notice how when you, uh, uh, like in movies, it's a movie real? That's because what the image you see on the screen is not real. It's what projected, okay? Belonging, uh, let's see, belonging to the thing itself, right? Property, res means in Latin, property, goods, right? Matter thing affair which Devon traces to the pi uh star h r e h dash i dash meaning wealth goods right source of sanskrit rain and raya properties goods re e meaning wealth meaning um the meaning genuine is recorded from 1550s right now we're talking about genuine, okay? Unaffected, no nonsense is from 1847, okay? Real estate, the exact term, land, including what is natural, naturally or artificially on or in it is recorded from 1660s, okay? That 20 years from the 1640s, and we're just talking about that doom diversity, right? Just talking about that. Doom diverses. Okay. So just wanted to um, quickly move on because we're talking about reality. Right. But what are we really talking about? Well, in order to uh, spiral up or spiral down, there must be oscillation. Okay. Um, duality, polarity, and or movement. Okay. Duality, polarity, and movement, much like information, data, and wisdom. Duality, polarity, and movement creates your understanding. And in a similar way, you know, your, your duality can be correct, your polarity can be correct, but if the movement is wrong, it's all wrong. Same at the same time. In the inverse, if, if duality is wrong and your polarity is wrong, if the movement is right, it will correct the, the former two. And when that happens, um, this is when understanding, this is, or I should say, this is why uh, understanding is the door to wisdom, okay? You know, we're talking about, you know, when you're talking about the, the, the Aleph Bet, you know, we're talking about the move, you know, talking about that water. That chaos or that gas. And, and it's funny because not a, you know, just a, as I'm thinking about it and to point out, quickly point out, you know, in Genesis chapter one, you know, the, the, the spirit moves upon the face of the deep. And it's the only entry dealing with the spirit as far as it is concerned the spirit never stopped moving there is there is no declaration that the spirit has stopped moving since genesis 1 to create what we know as reality 
but we often um, miss who, what, when, where, why, how, if that spirit is. So when it comes to, 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 to wisdom, right? Wisdom governs aspects of, uh, wisdom governs aspect or wisdom's dominion domain are aspects. Okay. And basically there's, um, six aspects, you know, map six masculine, six feminine. You might can, you can also say six positive, six negative, um, but uh, basically, there's it seems to be a, a core, a core 12, 12 aspects, and those. It's probably it's not surprising, um, as we dig on it, um, that that those twelve aspects probably correlate to the twelve tribes, and why do I bring that up? Because, again, when you're talking, when you're talking about. Hosea 3 and 5 and Nehemiah and, and, and things of that nature. We're talking Ezekiel. Um, you, you, you know, there's a confusion between the um, the tribes of Jacob and the children of Israel. We often conflate the two. You know, I bring it, you know, I think it was uh, Chief Warhorse. Uh, she said it best. A lot of us are, are Hebrew, but not all of us are from Jacob. You know? But we're talking about um, aspect. Right? Aspect. Now, aspect, right? An astrological term. Now, again, Seth for Hobbes Will, Book of Precepts. Same thing we got when we were digging on the uh, Lady Dragons on the Wall. Shouldn't be dealing all on the um, astronomy, astrology. It's the same thing. Um, and you shouldn't be, you know, digging on it in that regard. Uh, when it puts, especially when it puts you out of out of alignment with Hawa. Now, what we're talking about relative position of planets as they appear from Earth, i.e., how they look at one another. Also one of the ways of viewing something okay so it's just simply one of the ways of viewing something okay expect this a scene right looking at sight view continents appearance continents if you've been surfing the wave I think it was on uh, natural natural's drop Talking about your continents, your face. You know when you when you make that, you know scowl. You know when you're talking about being a a, a dragon is a, a fierce and violent woman, man or woman, male or female, right? Um, you know that's that 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 look. You know when you throw shade at somebody, right? It's your continents, right? From the past participle. Uh, a, uh, a spicery. Now, I want you to pay attention because what do we have here? Because we're talking about spice. You know, the spice trade. What was what was what was the spice trade really about? We're really talking about the the trading of aspects, the trading of uh, uh, one one of the ways of of viewing something. Because that sounds more true when we put everything together. We're going to talk about that a lot dealing with the spice trade, right? The Silk Road, the Golden, the golden Horde or Golden Order, right? Look at, right? Look upon, behold, observe, examine, you know, figuratively consider, ponder, right? From uh, add meaning to and uh, specare, specare to look at. I mean to look, which takes you to the pie speak or spec, right? To observe means uh, the look one wears, right? The appearance of things attested to the early 15th century, 
sense of facing in the given facing in a given direction again why is that in the 1660s okay let's dig on the, the pie to observe right we're talking about aspect forms all are a part of aspect auspects auspices auspicious bishop right circumspect Conspicuous, uh, despicable, despised, Episcopal, a special, espionage, espy. Now we got, we got the espy awards, right? Expect, frontispiece, front, a gyroscope. You know, the gyroscope is what allows you to move your, your phone around and, and, and it keeps your videos up, right? Right? The, the galactic model of the earth as, as they try to you know, putting our brain cells as, as a perception of reality, the earth is a gyroscope, okay, um, a horospect, horoscope, right, inspect, inspection, inspector, you notice there's a lot of, uh, I hope you notice a trend, okay, you're talking about, because, uh, uh, because again, you have a lot of, you have this, you have this titles, and then there's names. And now you're starting to see some of these titles that you're usually, uh, uh, that you're more familiar with. You know, you know, in a lot of ways, why is a bishop uh, at the root of the word connected to a spy? You know, why is that? You know, so when you're, when you're talking about these, uh, uh, when you're reading about, um, the Roman invasion, uh, they're calling him father, uh, you know, in one aspect, you're going to kind of get this holier than thou benevolent picture painted and in reality, you're talking about soldiers, you know what I'm saying? Uh, officers, um, things of that nature. And the, I think it was, uh, I think it was Dane Calloway recently and made that point in one of his recent drops too about how, you know, you know, why they call him, why is it a ministry, or the, you know, a prime minister, you know, things of that nature. But this is also where you get what? Your respect. To observe respect. So if you're not getting your, you know, and so what we're talking about, to, to look again, look at me one more time, look at me a different time. And then you also have what? Respite. Hate me one more time. <laughs> you know, we're talking about the full scope, right? Looking back, retrospect, you know, being doubtful, skeptic, right? That doubt in Thomas. But we're also talking about what? Species, specimen. And, rem and remember, a species is, um, a, I don't want to say devolved, but it is a more, it's more, um, it's a lesser rank than a type or a kind or a genus, right? You know, we're talking about that full spectrum, right? Uh, you know, th this is this is where again when you understand the sounds of things, you kinda it kinda have to make you make you wonder. You know there there is multiplying by dividing and then there's dividing by multiplying. And when it comes down to, um, when it comes down to, uh, um, let's say, the number of man, you can you you can find something interesting happens. What do I mean? Well, you know, six times nine is fifty-four. Nine times six is fifty-four. So six times nine, nine times six, they're one and the same, right? But. Nine divided by six gets you one and a half. Now, check this out. Six divided by nine. Six divided by nine gets you the number of man. It's point six 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 perpetually, forever. And I don't want you to get spooked out about the number of man. Again, going back to those 
questions. Who put that in your head, ball? You see, it says that the mark of the beast is the number of man. Now that you know what a mark is, who, you know, are we talking about who as far as the mark? Because the first Bible, the first gospel is Mark. You know, the mark of the beast. You know, the the, the beast is subtle and the and the beast hunts man. I mean that that's Genesis chapter chapter three. You know, when we're talking about a mark, come on man, let's keep it keep it street level. Keep it again down to earth. Man Man is the target. Man is the mark of the beast. Yes. The mark of the beast is man. And you have to start to put it together. And, and, and put it together correctly in your head bone. This is, this is why there's a difference between the end of days and the latter days. The end of days meaning it's all it's over. <laughs> There's no more days after the end of days. You know what I'm saying? But it clearly is written in your revelations, right? That there is still days after the end of days. And then you have uh, um, now what's the latter days? Well, we're talking about the end of the week. We're talking about Shabbat. Remember, understand that there's 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 seven days. On the seventh day, you should rest. There should be rest on the seventh day. Now, because of uh, Hosea 3 and 5, right? Because of Hosea 3 and 5, we, uh, because of Hosea 3 and 5, we don't have a sacrifice. We don't have an ephod, right? Put a dismount. Why am I bringing all this up? Because we're talking about the we're talking about Moses, right? Who wrote the first five books? Now, when you put everything back together, all right, let's check this out. Then Moses Maimon, right? Moses Maimonides, also known as Rambam. He was born in 1138, died in 1204, right? That, that's his branch in the timeline, as they say. But he writes, the Sefer Hamas Wo, right? During his lifetime, most Jews greeted Mamanita's writings on Jewish law and ethics with acclaim and gratitude, even as far away as Iraq and Yemen. Yet while Mamanita's rose, uh, to become the revered head of the Jewish community in Egypt. His writings also had uh, vociferous critics, particularly in Spain. Nonetheless, he was posthumously acknowledged as one of the foremost rabbinic decisors and philosophers in Jewish history. His copious works comprise a cornerstone of Jewish scholarship. His 14th volume, Mishnah Torah, still carries significant canonical authority in codification of the Halakha. He is sometimes known as ha Nasher ha Gado, the great eagle, in recognition for his outstanding status as a bona fide expert on the oral Torah. Now, the letter of Pastor John went out, right? The letter of Pastor John went out 1122, as we know. This this moment Moses Maimonides was born. Eleven thirty eight, they say. Right, and you know in twelve o two things popped off. But we also know that this Moses Maimonides is also known as Anand Ben David. Now, his dates say that he was popping off roughly the same time, but in a different section of time, right? 
widely considered to be a major founder. Let's see if I can make this a little bit smaller. Sorry. A major founder of the Karaite movement of, or of, Ju of Judaism. His followers were called Ananites. And like most Karaites, right, did not believe in rabbinic Jewish oral law such as the Mishnah, to be authoritative, okay? And we dug on this, but this Anand ben David is being erased from the history books. You know, because Anon is Anion. Anon is Anion. So we're talking about the Straits of Anion, we're talking about the Straits of Anon. With this Anon ben David, and you dig on it, this story is a lot for beat for beat. The same story that we get with Moses Mamanias popping off at a different point in time. Now, again, I bring all this up is because with their phantoms and duplications, right? With all the typologies that's going on, yo, 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 your takedown being recent. What if I would tell you that Genesis just happened? You know, Moses. The Exodus popping off in the 1200s, right? That that's a uh, it's a lot more frightening because it means it just happened. But with all these phantom and duplications, it's tough to lock down the, the 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 original the original source. But when you look at the works of Anatoly, he says that when you bring it all together. At the quote unquote mythical year zero seems to be like 1153, 1150, 1153, 1154. You know. Don't get don't get trapped when you're doing all the different type of recon. Don't get don't get trapped in a particular aspect to mold your reality. As hard as it can be. As hard as it is, keep looking at things and, and, and stretching yourself to look at things from a dragonfly perspective. It's important for your growth um, and foundation to continue to build. Thank you for surfing the wave with me because I'm surfing the wave with you. I hope this has been uh, an enjoyable drop for you guys. Hope everyone, <coughs> excuse me, continues to do well, continue to be blessed and bless others. And just remember, a lot of this stuff is recent, more recent than you know. Because at the end of the day, you just was put to sleep. And at the end of the day, you're just not waking up. There's a legit reason why they keep saying you were, you were a slave for 400 years and this happened 400 years ago because there's a blurring of history and time. You know, there's a totally different pop-off and you have to recognize where you're at in the timeline because, you know, when you break it all down, you know what I'm saying? You know, we're, 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 we're kind of in this like uh, year 200. We're in this like middle flow where it's going to determine the next 200 years. You know, no no different than the how we discovered the, the the dark ages is the middle ages, but you got like a hundred years or whatever it is on either side of the dark ages. But to the the to read the dark ages and to read the middle ages, depending on the context, is going to paint a different reality. So when you're talking about the I'm talking about the, the Pentateuch. 
the books of Moses. Which one? Which one? And when you dig on it, no wonder uh, when, when Moses said, quote unquote, died, life didn't abate him. So, choose up, suit up, and vibe up. I love y'all. Peace.